Hey, what's up guys? Sloth King here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to perform some brake maintenance. There's about five things that you should be looking at. Maybe, maybe just a few things. But the main things we are gonna be focusing on is making sure that our calipers aren't seized, our brake pads and the shims, pretty much this, the hardware, is going to be lubricated as well. And we're going to be checking our brake pad um, life, pretty much just the thickness of it. So let me go ahead and uh, take the wheels off, put the Forerunner up in the air, and then uh, I'll go over what we're gonna be needing. All right, so I got the uh, Forerunner up on some jack stands. You are going to need a jack and some jack stands. Uh, you will definitely be needing some gloves, some rags. Uh, you will need a socket set. Usually uh, whenever I'm doing brake stuff, I usually like going with the, a half inch set. Uh, you're gonna need a breaker bar. You will need a brush of some sort to clean off any of the old brake gunk, some brake parts cleaner. I also forgot to mention that you will need a torque wrench to torque down your caliper bolts. That way they are nice and tight. And you will need some small wrenches from a six millimeter to a 10 millimeter so you can open up your bleeder valve on your caliper as well. For the lubrication section of this, uh, you have a couple different options. I like going with the CRC brake and caliper grease. Now you can put this on your slide pins, you can put this on the back of your pads, on your shims. And then uh, another good one is this AGS Sil Glide. You can use it on all the same spots that I told you as well. But um, I much prefer this stuff. I've noticed that it holds up a little bit longer and it stays on your pads a little bit longer as well. Now you will need a C-clamp to push your piston back if you are replacing your pads today. Sometimes you will need a special kit that has a tool that twists your uh, brake piston in. Some of them, like on the rear, uh, the piston has to turn to get like recessed in. But uh, anyway, you might need to rent one of those. And then you will need some brake fluid for your specific vehicle. Now, I can't tell you which one to pick up. You have to look at your owner's manual. Uh, dot three and dot four are interchangeable, so those will mix just fine. You can pick up any one of those, but dot five will not mix with three or four. Uh, if you're doing this by yourself, uh, you will need a bottle with a hose on it, so you can see the old fluid and uh, any air bubbles that come out if you're taking off your caliper or whatever, you know, or just to see the color of the new fluid coming through. And then you will need a suction device like a turkey baster or something. Now I put out a short on how to bleed your brakes by yourself. Go ahead and, and click that up here. A lot of you that comment on there, uh, whenever I mention the turkey baster to put your old fluid into your bottle, you guys don't know what a turkey baster is. And I feel really bad for you guys during Thanksgiving if you've never had like good turkey, like man. Anyway, so this is all you're going to need and uh, it's pretty simple to do. So let's get right into this. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is remove our cap on our brake reservoir. This is where you will take some of the fluid out and put it into the bottle. I already have some of it in here. I don't know why I didn't show this on camera, but anyway, this is where you take your suction device or a turkey baster, put it in there, take some out, and then put it into the bottle. Because when you go ahead and bleed your brakes, since you're doing it by yourself, uh, you want some fluid in here so it doesn't suck in air back into the caliper when you let go of the pedal. It makes it a lot easier. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it open because when we take that caliper off, we're gonna push our piston in and our brake fluid needs to come back into the reservoir a little bit. All right, so on your caliper, you are going to need to remove two guide pins. So they are located here and then right here. This allows the caliper to slide in and out. In some cases, whenever we take this off, uh, usually you would need to take off like uh, your brake line bracket so that way you have enough slack to move your piston around. But in this case, I already have enough slack whenever I take this off. Let's go ahead and take this off. All right, got the slide pins out. Keep track of these. 
Sometimes they're a little bit different. You'll have one for the bottom, one for the top. Keep that in mind. Now we gotta take off the caliper itself. There we go. I also forgot to mention that these hooks come in handy or you can use like a bungee cord just so you can suspend the caliper and not let the brake line uh, take all of the weight on it. So you see how this is suspended and the brake line has no stress on it. This is totally acceptable. All right, so from this point, we're going to see if our piston is seized on our caliper. So this is where a C-clamp comes in handy. I like resting the top part on the back and then this push section, I will just drive right into the center of the piston and we should be able to turn this and the piston should get recessed further into the caliper with ease. Now this piston is totally fine. It is not seized up. We're good to go and we don't have to worry about replacing the caliper. And since we're right here, uh, this is a good point to just spray some brake parts cleaner on a rag and then clean the face of this piston right here just to get any of that gunk off because we are going to be applying some new grease to our brake pad. There we go. Nice and clean. Now let's move on to taking out the brake pads. All right, so right now this is a good way to test the thickness of your brake pads. Mine are actually really good still after a full, I think two years of driving it or a year and a half, something like that. But usually these will have like a, a wear squeal indicator. So whenever you apply your brakes, you should hear squeal and that is going to be located on the inside part of uh, where your brake pad is. So let's go ahead and pop that off and see where it's at. All right, so if we're looking at this pad, this was on the inside section where the caliper piston is, and we have our wear indicator right here. The reason why we put it on the inside part towards the piston is because whenever the pad gets pushed in from the piston, if your pad is low, it will start squeaking. So whenever it gets like pushed back a little bit, it'll stop squeaking. So every single time you push it and you hear like squeaking coming from somewhere, go ahead and check your pads. Make sure that they, uh, they still have enough meat on them. Like these are completely fine. Keep this in mind, keep the orientation of where your squeak indicator is and keep your pads like, okay, that's the inside pad. Let's take out the outside pad right here. Might be a little stuck in there. Sometimes you'll need to get like a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver just to get in there. Oops. All right, so now that our pads are out, uh, we should be able to see our shims right here and they look pretty dry. So we are going to spray some brake parts cleaner on that and take our brush and just scrub that shim and then we are going to apply a little bit of grease on there and try not to get it on the surface of your um, rotor right here. All right, let's go ahead and spray this. Go ahead and scrub that. Now, you can remove the bracket if you need to, but in this case, we're just gonna be cleaning this and then we can turn the rotor and then clean the face of the rotor that got any any of the gunk on it. So you don't have to worry about taking off the bracket if you don't want to. Unless it's just like filled with like some corrosion, then go ahead and take the bracket off. But right now we're just cleaning a little bit of the gunk off. So once that is like that, go ahead and wipe it. And we should have some clean shims right here. We're going to do it on each point. So there's going to be a section here, a section over here, and then on the top part as well. So go ahead and clean those points. And then when you're done, I'll show you where we are going to put some of the lube. All right, I got all of the points cleaned and I also cleaned off the face of the rotor with some of the brake parts cleaner. Now we are going to take some of our brake parts grease and on the shim, you're just going to put a light coat right there and then right in the sliding area. 
Don't get any on the face of the rotor. Trust me, less is more. So go ahead and put this on all points of your shims. And then we are going to go to our brake pads next. All right, I got the grease all on there. Hopefully you can see it. This light is awful. So now we are going to clean the back of our pads with some brake parts cleaner. Take our brush real quick and just hit the points. Hit this section right here, like these little ears. Wipe it off with a rag. Do it to this one over on this side. There we go. Now next, we are going to take a little bit of that brake lube, right? And what I like doing first is just applying it on these ears right here. This is where it's going to glide into the shims. So we want to make sure that this is nice and lubricated. Do it on both sides. Get it on this underside. Do not get it on the brake pad itself. Now you're going to do this on both sides. And then after we get our new pads installed, we will apply a little bit of grease on the back side of this. And I'll show you where that is. All right, with our pads installed, we're going to apply a little bit of grease on this back side. There's two contact points right here and right down on the bottom. Now, if you look, the reason why I'm putting it there is because on the caliper, there's these two ears and we want to make sure that the metal that's contacting the pad will have some lube or some grease to, you know, not rust on. And then on the back side of the pad, right where your piston is, we're going to apply it right in the center. So that way the piston doesn't seize to the back of it. See the grease I just put on right there? That's where you want to apply the grease on the back side of the pad facing the piston. All right, now one thing left to do. Now our caliper slide pins, we are going to clean it off with some brake parts cleaner. Get any of the old grease off. And then you can apply some of this stuff right on the pin itself. Or you can apply this stuff. So since I already have this stuff on it, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just going to put a little bit on. It looks like a lot, but you'll need it. Uh, right before you install these, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the lube all on this pin so that way we can slide it in. Now let's go ahead and grab our caliper, reinstall it. It should install pretty easily since we pushed the piston in. And then now this is where we can get our hands a little, little greasy. So take your slide pin, apply the the lube all the way around. And then we are going to install it. Now do that for both of them and then torque them down. For my application, this will be 65 foot pounds. Well done. All right, now that we have our pads and caliper reinstalled and uh, it's all torqued down. One other thing to check if uh, that I forgot to mention earlier, if your pads were worn down and they're grinding, make sure you check the face of your rotor if there's any deep gouges. If you can feel it with your fingernail, then you will need to get your rotors turned or replaced. So keep that in mind. These are fine. My pads are fine. 
these rotors are like a year old so we're all good there next uh all you need to do is go ahead and bleed your caliper on the forerunner the rears are a 10 millimeter and the fronts are an eight millimeter if you're working on a fourth gen but for your vehicle uh the bleeder valve is going to be a different size most of the time on every vehicle so i'm not going to go ahead and show the bleeding process since i already have a video out there for you now this is where the bottle method comes in handy for you guys got that submerged right so let's go ahead and crack that open got some air i mean uh not air i got some fluid coming out so let's go pump the brake pedal a few times we're going to bring the pedal all the way down to the floor and then slowly release it And then let me get you a shot of what's going on underneath the vehicle while I do this. That way you can see what I mean about having some fluid in there so the brake fluid doesn't go back in like running it dry. All right, I will start pressing the brake pedal right now. But on most cars, you don't need to have your car uh, running or your key on you can just go ahead and open up the bleeder valve press your brake pedal and then it will bleed it out some some cars like the forerunner you will need your key on the on position just to activate your abs and your abs will pump out all the fluid so if you're going to go ahead and replace your brake fluid on here in most cases if your abs unit and your reservoir is located on the driver's side you are going to start on the rear passenger, then go to the rear driver, go to the front passenger, and end on the rear driver. And that's, uh, that's how you go ahead and bleed the whole system. You wanna bleed the longest brake line first, and then shorten it down. So yeah, anyways, that's, uh, that's what you guys need to do next. But other than that, you guys are all done taking care of your brake maintenance. You just need to go ahead and do the other side and you can go ahead and check your front calipers and pads as well. Now, one thing to note, if your front calipers are different than your rears, like mine are, this is a floating uh, pad system. So you're going to have a couple um, pins that go through here that hold your pad down. And uh, yeah, you just need to release those and then grease up your pads. All right, guys, and that's it. That's how you go ahead and check uh, your whole brake system, make sure the maintenance is up to date and um, yeah, like, uh, like I said before, if you need to bleed your brakes, go ahead and check out that short that I made on that as well. If you're doing it on a 4Runner, that application works as well, but I also have a proper procedure on how to do it if you have a scan tool, so you can activate the ABS pump and bleed out all of the air from the ABS. But anyways, yeah, it's not too bad to do. I like to do this stuff about once a year or so, because like if you go through a lot of car washes and you clean your wheels a lot, a lot of those chemicals will take off that um, the grease for your brake pads. And uh, you want to make sure everything's all nice and lubricated so that way your pads and pistons will work properly. Anyways, if this video helped you guys out, awesome. Glad to hear that. And like always, I'll catch you guys on the next ride.